This is part three in a three-part series that runs the numbers on the supposed global flood of Noah. In the previous two videos we looked at how much water would be needed to flood the earth to a depth that would cover the summit of Mount Everest. We determined that this volume was over three times the present volume of the earth's oceans. We halved this massive volume between the water that, according to scripture, came from beneath the earth and the water that came from above, from what some creationists call a vapour cloud, and got some truly awesome results, determining that the vapour cloud would be larger than the planet Neptune, and would need a similarly awesome sized atmosphere for it to be a vapour in, which due to its size would exert a pressure so massive that at sea level the atmosphere would be liquefied under its own mass, and so Noah and Adam before him, and the god that made Adam in his own image, must have been a fish that swam and breathed liquid atmosphere. Now, we have a more energetic problem of what happens when a Neptune-sized cloud of water vapour collapses. It requires energy to keep water in a vapour state, and water condensing from a vapour to a liquid will give off energy. This energy is equivalent to the amount of energy required to vaporise that much water in the first place. Luckily, we know exactly how much energy is required to vaporise water. It's called the heat of vaporisation, and for water it is 2.27 megajoules per kilogram. Now, in our vapour cloud we have two quintillion, two hundred and fifty-six quadrillion, five hundred and fifty-eight trillion, five hundred and twenty-eight billion metric tons, which is equivalent to two sextillion, two hundred and fifty-six quintillion, five hundred and fifty-eight quadrillion, five hundred and twenty-eight trillion kilograms of water, which is about one and a half times the total volume of all the water on Earth today. We simply multiply this figure in kilograms by 2.27 million, which is the number of joules in 2.27 megajoules, and the figure we get is in the region of 5 octillion joules. Now, I'm not going to be any more accurate than 5 octillion, because I don't really need to. That is such a bloody big number, it makes its own point, and I would be here all day just trying to say it. It looks like this. That's right. It is a 5 with 27 zeros behind it, and that amount of energy is roughly equivalent to 1.2 billion megatons of TNT. And if that does not sound like a lot, then consider this. The largest atomic explosion ever created by man was the Tsar Bomber, and that was around 50 megatons in size. 1.2 billion megatons, or 5 octillion joules, is sufficient energy to power the entire United States of America at its present energy consumption for over 358,000 years. In fact, just to hammer it home, how much energy that is, it is about the same amount of energy that has struck the surface of the Earth from the Sun over the last 1,000 years. This could have been a bit of a problem for Noah, bearing in mind that all of this energy would have been liberated over a period of just 40 days. It would certainly have taken care of the problem of where did the 26,000 kilometres of extra atmosphere go, as that would most certainly have been boiled off into space. The only problem is that it would have also most probably have also boiled just about everything else off into space. Of course, as I mentioned before, with the absence of 99.99% of thereabouts of the Earth's atmosphere, up to that point Noah probably had other things on his mind. We are going to presume that among these was what was going to happen when all of that water needed to be evaporated. 
You see, this five octillion joules of energy was liberated by about a third of the water that was presently sloshing around the planet, and at some point three quarters of that water was going to need to be disposed of. Yeah, I think you can see where this is going. Noah sails around for a, about a year, then in the space of a few days the water levels start to recede. Now. According to modern science, we are pretty sure that those 4.5 billion extra cubic kilometers of water are not hanging around the Earth somewhere. I think it, we would notice them. After all, 4.5 billion cubic kilometers of water is equivalent to over three times the volume of the water in all of the Earth's oceans. So I'm going to consider that the water evaporated and was boiled off into space. If you're a creationist and you know difference, then I'd love to hear from you. But seeing as we're talking science in this video and not magic, we'll stick with the idea of evaporation. Now, this is where our 2.27 million joules per kilogram of water figure comes in handy again, because if we multiply the number of kilograms of water we have, which is around 4.5 sextillion, we get an energy requirement of 10 octillion joules, or about 2.4 billion megatons of TNT. Yeah, that's enough to power the United States of America for nearly three quarters of a million years. Hmm. That's right, in just a few days at least about the same sum total amount of energy that has struck the surface of the Earth over the last 2,000 years evaporated over 4.5 billion cubic kilometers of water. The real miracle is that it didn't turn Noah and his animals into gaseous carbon, vaporize the ark and turn the surface of the Earth into glass. And besides, if it did go off into space, where is the cloud of water greater than the combined volume of Neptune and Uranus? It's probably hiding. Anyway, I'm sure there are many more points I can bring up that I only touched on briefly, or not at all, such as the gravitational force required to hold that much extra water and atmosphere on the surface of the Earth, and how much more massive the planet Earth would have to be. The fact that not a lot of light gets through miles upon miles of clouds in an atmosphere 26,000 kilometers deep. Or, if that much water fell as rain in just 40 days and nights, then it would mean that about three quarters of a ton of water was falling on every square meter of the Earth's surface every 10 minutes. Or that for it to all vanish in 150 days, the water level would have to fall at about two and a half meters per hour. That's two and a half tons of water vanishing across every square meter of the Earth. But I'm not going to poke fun at any of that in this video. If you, as the viewer, wants to do those calculations, then please feel free. After all, as I've said, most of the calculations in these videos have used very basic maths, and all of my source reference data has been from Wikipedia, which I admit is not the most reliable reference source, but it is probably one of the most readily available. I think I've made my point. If you are a Bible literist or a creationist and you feel like addressing any of the points in this video series, then be my guest. I await your replies with anticipation and excitement. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the show. Stop.